inviting me today to talk about uh, T-cell therapies after transplant. I, um, to focus this 15-minute talk, I wanted to uh, really focus on uh, the use of virus-specific T-cells after bone marrow transplant. I do have some uh, disclosures in both the virus-specific T-cell space uh, related to uh, SARS-CoV-2 and uh, to naive donor VSTs. So I don't need to belabor to this audience that for our vulnerable bone marrow transplant population, antiviral drugs are not 100% effective and they're not available for all viruses. Furthermore, there is a cost associated with these uh, uh, viral infections, not only in terms of financial costs, but in terms of uh, unacceptable side effects. T-cell immunity is our greatest guardian against viral reactivation. And we know this because when virus-specific T-cell frequencies go down, our risk of viremia dramatically increases. There has been, over the past two decades, improved technology uh, generating donor-derived virus-specific T-cells to administer to patients after uh, bone marrow transplant. This has now shown that this uh, strategy is not only clinically feasible, but it is safe and has shown efficacy. This is evidenced in two recent reviews that we've published in blood, showing that donor-derived virus-specific T-cells when given as prophylactic strategies after bone marrow transplant are over 90% effective at preventing viral disease. Furthermore, when you're treating uh, patients with active viral infection or disease after bone marrow transplant, you can see efficacy rates ranging from 80 to greater than 90%, depending on the study. We now have two um, uh, approaches at our institution where we can generate uh, these virus-specific T-cells for our patients after bone marrow or cord blood transplant. So we have, uh, in other words, we are able to generate uh, virus-specific T-cells from virus-naive donors like umbilical cord blood. We have shown that these virus-specific T cells are safe to infuse to patients and that these cells persist for at least a year after T cell infusion. So we're really contributing to durable antiviral immunity in this vulnerable BMT population. Moreover, regardless of the source of the virus-specific T cells, both populations appear to prevent viral disease in our most vulnerable BMT patient population. Currently, we have a novel product that we're evaluating in the clinic targeting five viruses, as you can see here. In particular, we're targeting two uh, respiratory viruses, uh, including uh, adenovirus and parainfluenza 3. This is um, of interest as we move on to explore uh, extending this product to SARS-CoV-2. Currently, this study is enrolling uh, two arms, one with patients uh, to prevent viral disease after transplant and the other arm for patients with active disease. So what if you don't have a donor available to make virus-specific T cells? And that's where this concept of a virus-specific T cell bank comes from. This concept was pioneered by Dorothy Crawford in the UK and certainly eliminates the weight for T-cell production. The concept of a virus-specific T-cell bank is that you um, have a donor, for example, here, this is his HLA type, and you know uh, after characterizing the product through which alleles you see the virus-specific activity. So this is the virus-specific activity of this donor product based on their HLA type. So this means, for example, that uh, this product can be used for this patient here on the top right uh, who has PTLD because they share the B8 allele and we know the EBV specific activity is through B8. 
There have been now uh, several um, single and multi-center studies evaluating these uh, multivirus-specific off-the-shelf T cells for patients after bone marrow transplant and solid organ transplant. This was a um, multi-center study that was led um, out of Baylor when I was there, um, uh, which is still the largest multi-center study. Uh, but uh, more recently, the group from uh, Sloan Kettering have published their experience with EBV specific T cells used in the off shelf setting. Overall, you can see the response rates range from an oppressive 50 to greater than 90%, uh, depending on the viruses being targeted. Furthermore, you don't actually need to have a bank that is terribly large uh, to effectively treat over 90% of the referrals, as evidenced by our study uh, with a multi-center study uh, that we um, led out of Baylor, uh, and then our experience down the bottom with only 40 um, BST products, we also uh, have uh, identified matches for over 90% of our referrals. When these virus-specific T cells that are used in the off-the-shelf shelf setting work, it's pretty dramatic, as evidenced here with a, a, a child with a primary immune deficiency uh, after bone marrow transplant had devastating disseminated adenovirus, was put on palliative care, and then uh, was given uh, as an emergency use situation these third-party virus-specific T cells, which resulted in dramatic clearance of the adenovirus in this peripheral blood corresponding to a rise in the antigen-specific T cells in the peripheral blood. Furthermore, we have shown that uh, the donor-derived virus-specific T cells, we see about an 81% of efficacy. Uh, and similarly, our third-party virus-specific T cell products are performing almost as well uh, in, uh, for patients with active uh, refractory viral disease. Uh, the viral responses by uh, virus, uh, there seems to be a slightly decreased response with EBV uh, responses, but uh, the numbers are still too small to show any statistical significance. Moreover, these uh, use of the third party VSTs are remarkably well tolerated with very little uh, graft versus host disease or other toxicities. Based on this work, Mike Keller and Mike Pulsiver have just completed a national-wide uh, study evaluating these off-the-shelf virus-specific T cells through the Pediatric Blood and Marrow Transplant Consortium and the Primary Immune Deficiency Treatment Consortium. Uh, these were using CMV, EBV, and adenovirus-specific T cells either for patients with active disease after bone marrow transplant or for patients with primary immune deficiency as a way to get them uh, cleared of their virus so they could get to transplant. Overall, what we can say so far that the use of these third-party VSTs is remarkably well tolerated. Uh, there is um, pretty um, impressive efficacy, um, especially in the CMV and adenovirus setting where you're seeing approximately 80% efficacy, although other viruses, including EBV and BK virus, are showing um, promise. Uh, the T cells do expand uh, after third party T cell infusion, but don't last long term. So it may require several infusions to sustain uh, benefit of these third party uh, T cells. The next question is, well, how far can you go? How many viruses can you target? And can you target every virus? Um, and this was a study that uh, was uh, Mike Keller and, and we did a few years back uh, with Lauren McLaughlin to show that you can actually target eight viruses in a single product, including influenza A, RSV, VZV. 
Um, and um, we have also been able to expand uh, to HIV. We currently have four clinical trials evaluating HIV-specific T cells. And Mike has just started a trial evaluating norovirus-specific T cells. We also have developed um, virus-specific T cells for Zika virus and, as I said, HPV, as well as um, mycobacteria and fungal antigens. So that led us obviously naturally to see if we could extend our platform to SARS-CoV-2. Uh, we knew that there were antigens we could target, um, uh, such as uh, spike nuclear capsid membrane and envelope. We knew that these were immunogenic from SARS-CoV. Uh, so based on this, um, we looked at whether it would be an opportunity to generate SARS-CoV-2-specific T cells. However, it should be noted that publications have come out that there have been perhaps more favorable outcomes uh, after bone marrow transplant when patients get affected with uh, SARS-CoV-2. Having said that, um, what the patients still have um, appreciable morbidity and mortality associated with SARS-CoV-2 in the BMT setting. But more concerning is the fact that uh, there are reports, increasing reports, that these patients are having significant difficulty clearing these viruses and these long-term persistent infections in these immunosuppressed patients are leading to in vivo evolution of the viruses, including some of the more virulent mutant strains that we're currently dealing with. This is an example here uh, showing the evolution of uh, one of the more mutant strains recently being discovered. So we wanted to see if we could generate uh, SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells to clear the virus in our BMT patient populations who were clearly having difficulties uh, clearing the virus and would not uh, be able to mount a response to the vaccine. So we collected um, blood from uh, 46 uh, convalescent donors. You can see most of these people had mild disease with only 4% um, needing hospitalization. You can see here that most, but not all of these convalescent donors uh, did mount responses to spike and a nuclear capsid in terms of their antibody responses. So we again uh, generated the cells like um, we had for our other VST products using uh, overlapping peptide, uh, peptides for membrane spike, nuclear capsid, uh, and uh, envelope, and then uh, pulsing our antigen-presenting cells uh, and T cells uh, with these uh, peptides to stimulate and expand a, a, a T cell population. You can see here that in the convalescent donors, uh, dramatic uh, expansion of T cells targeting spike, nuclear capsid, and membrane. Moreover, very similar to what we see with adenovirus and parainfluenza, uh, most of the T cells that we expand are CD4 positive. Also, interestingly, as I said, not all the convalescent donors did seroconvert. While all of them did have detectable T cell responses, only the donors who had um, also seroconverted did you see uh, more dramatic responses to other um, T cell antigens uh, in the SARS-CoV-2, most critically nuclear capsid and membrane. So the message here is if you seroconverted, then you elicited a much more broader T cell response to the virus. We also showed, interestingly, that the T cell responses in the seropositive uh, donors was very targeted towards a highly conserved region of membrane near the C terminus, um, irrespective of your HLA type. Um, this has implications because this is a conserved region, and um, unlike in spike, which the uh, vaccine is targeting, seems less likely to be vulnerable to the development of mutant strains. 
Nevertheless, we did show that our T cell products um, were relatively effective against uh, the COVID-2 uh, variants that were available at the time. But it's important to note there was very little cross-reactivity to seasonal coronavirus epitopes. So in conclusion, it is possible to expand SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells from recovered donors, which we could use uh, to generate a SARS-CoV-2 T cell bank and also to use uh, in a donor-derived T cell setting. It does seem that seroconversion seems to correlate with the breadth of the T cell response. And as a result of this data, we're hoping to open our clinical trial uh, within the next month. So hopefully clinical results will be available later this year. So I'd like to thank the entire virus-specific T cell program at my institution, led by um, Mike Keller, um, uh, and with a special note to uh, Patrick Hanley, who leads our GMP, and uh, Fumita Hogg, who's our, our head of regulatory. So thank you.